Okay, we're back. We are talking about procrastination and we ended up uh, in the last video talking about the connection between distraction and procrastination. But now we're going to go on with some statistics about how prevalent is procrastination today. Uh, as we mentioned, it's up to about 25% of adults. So between 15 to 25% of adults regularly procrastinate. Uh, and when it comes to college students, uh, 80 to 95% of college students procrastinate at some level and 50% consider it a problem. I am a college student. I'm a university uh, graduate student and I get procrastination <laughs> when it comes to working on your studies. I can actually procrastinate for months and months and months and then cram it all in the end. However, that's not the right way to do it. All right, in one study they say that 88% of those surveyed said they procrastinated for at least an hour a day. Okay. That's not a big deal. One downtime hour is not a huge deal. But when that hour is being plugged in, pieces of that hour is being plugged into projects, it's a real big deal. Because instead of a project taking you an hour, it can take you two or three hours because of the procrastination issue. All right, so, um, we mentioned at the beginning of the last video that more people struggle with procrastination today uh, than alcoholism, substance abuse, and or depression. So it's really a topic we need to address. Now, even though it is difficult to pinpoint exactly what's causing this self-sabotaging behavior, and that's what procrastination is, it's self-sabotaging. You know, you want to move forward. You have a vision to move forward. You think about it every day. I got to get this done. I really want to make this happen. I want to do this. And then you sabotage it, right? It's like a diet. You know, you want to stick to it every day. You want to get off those extra pounds, etc. And then at some point during the day, you sabotage yourself, right? You eat the cookie, you go out to eat, you get the burger, you get the things with all the carbs, and and uh, and then it just kind of snowballs from there, right? Okay. Or you don't go to the gym, you know, you you know the you know the drill. All right. So here's a few little tips from uh, some research about why so many people procrastinate. Number one, all right, in the past, procrastination has often been considered a time management issue, but recent research studies suggest that procrastination is linked to mood regulation. Well, let me stop right there. I am not sure if you're familiar with the Myers-Briggs uh, personality test. You can go online, 16 different personalities or 16 personality, I don't think it's different, it's not, it's just not simple. Uh, a 16 personality like test or survey.com. So you can check that out. Maybe I'll put the link below. And so there's one group, the rarest group of all, they are called the INFJ. And I is for introvert. All right, N is for something, and uh, I'll remember it. F is for feeling, J is for judging, uh, and what is that N for? Well, anyways, I don't remember. Um, but the point being that one of the biggest things about an INFJ is they really do what they wanna do when they feel like it. They are like feely people. <laughs> I never thought about myself so much as an INFJ, but I am such an INFJ. A, I'm an advocate, and um, I get up in the morning, and very often, and, and as I get older, it's it's more. When I was younger, I, I had like this serious routine, even more serious than today, but but I get up in the morning, and I'm like, I don't feel like going to the gym. I don't feel like writing that. I don't feel like doing it. 
And that's why we created the Blacket Planner. I know you're hearing a lot about the Blacket Planner. It is the coolest thing. It is really created for this uh, to kind of take away the guesswork from the mood issues, right? That, you know, do we really feel like it? Okay, well, the interesting thing here is also time management. I am a graduate from Dale Carnegie and one of the big year classes courses, you know, I got this certification in sales and, and time management was one of my certifications, right? And I can tell you firsthand that I have never been able to manage time. However, now that I'm older, I understand something. You can't manage something that is not in your control. What do I mean by that? You might think time is in your control, but time just exists. You know, the sun comes up every day. The sun goes down every day. All the hours in a day are divided into these 60 minute time slots. And the truth about time is it just exists. And until you create it, you actually do something that connects you with an action in a particular slot of time. It just exists. So you can't manage what just exists. You have to create it. Now, I know this is a different way of thinking, but I am gonna tell you that if you struggle with time management, you stay with me because you're gonna be more productive than you ever have been in your life when you learn how to create time. Because again, it just exists. You are the one that has to harness it and then put it, put yourself or put the project or put what you wanna do in motion within it. You have to create the framework. And if you don't, then you're always looking for something. You're always trying to manage something that is just exists. <laughs> so, um, it's a little bit of a different way of thinking about it, but I will tell you, when I start to talk to you about block logic, about the difference between the logic developed by the Greeks and the logic that exists in the Torah that was handed to us from God, from Hashem, it's going to blow your mind away because God doesn't think linearly, linearly, linearly. I can't say that word. All right. God doesn't think premise to conclusion. No, he's always looking at the big picture and then drilling down to the increment and seeing, okay, how can I make that happen? What do I need to do to move that person or that promise or that situation forward? And usually the way that God does it is he brings together opposites and he puts them together and he says, okay, what's going to come out of this? What, what is it? that's sitting between these two that most people can't see that's going to become the catalyst to making this vision or this goal come to fruition. Now, very few people look at things like this, but when we're looking at procrastination, we know that there is another side to that. And we've got to find out what it is and then how we can use that to propel ourselves forward. 
So let's look at the next thing. Procrastination is a characteristic of ADHD, depression, and anxiety. Yes, it can be, and ADD, which is attention deficit, deficit syndrome. All right, yes, it can be. Uh, once again, though, these three things, all right, when they talk about moods, okay, all three of these are rooted in something else besides, you know, possibly chemical, you know, the chemical imbalance of your body uh, or actually fear, which we're going to talk a lot about, and um, depression, which is usually some kind of trauma that has caused you, caused an emotion or a particular paradigm, a way of thinking to get stuck in your emotions, in your psyche. All right, so moving on, uh, they say there are different uh, hypotheses on whether access to technology increases procrastination. Some experts suggest that new technologies have always been around or accessible, and it was a matter of whether or not individuals use them. Well, all right. Uh, technology increases procrastination. I, I will agree with it if technology is not living within a framework or if it's not part of a system. Because if you are interested in technology, you're interested in learning, and one day you pick this thing, and one day you pick that thing, and one day you pick this thing, and then you have all these little different pieces and parts, all right, that you're accessing during the day for this thing or that thing, and, and you haven't put that into a system, then you can get seriously distracted and you can procrastinate from the real project in getting something done because you get stuck in the skill set or the mindset of technology. But technology itself doesn't need to be the trigger or the catalyst for procrastination. It can actually be the, the way to solve procrastination. We have to talk more about that. Then the last thing here, others state that the highly tailored ads and billions of videos targeted to individuals' specific interests absolutely heighten procrastination rates. And again, I don't know if I would say procrastination, but it goes back to what we talked about at the end of the last video, which is the connection between procrastination and distraction. And procrastination is usually linked to not wanting to do something. And ads and billions of videos, I don't know that they keep us from procrastinating on an issue as much as they keep us distracted from attacking an issue. So these are the reasons that, uh, some of the top reasons they say that people are self-sabotaging uh, their behavior and they have heightened procrastination issues. But notice something, not one of them really attacked the issue of fear. And that's what we're gonna talk about in the next video. All right, I'll see you in the next video.